Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, the creator of Approval Tests. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how to write your own reporters. I'm going to do this in three steps. First, I'm going to talk about how to write a reporter from scratch. That will help you when you have just whatever ideas you have for your reporters. Then I'm going to talk about how I'd actually write that reporter. This is for adding a new diff reporter that I want to use, which is a fairly common process that I see people doing. They have their own tools, they want to use them. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to test that reporter, which is a very unique case, something that I've come up with in approval tests and something that we'll talk about in much more detail later on in the series. So let's get started. Oh, before we do though, if you haven't already seen the previous episodes about reporters, I suggest you click the links down there on intro or theory or inner workings. All three of these will give you a lot more context because we're going to go pretty fast and pretty technical through this one. So what we're going to do today is we're going to write our own reporter for the KDIF reporter program. And the first thing we're going to need is where is that program? So let me go and get it. And I'm going to hold the shift key in the right click so I can copy this as a path. Now I'm going to go and I'm writing a reporter, so it has to be an I approval failure reporter. I'm going to implement the methods in there. And this gives me my report method. And all I want to do is call the process and tell it to start. It is going to take the program that I just did plus the parameters. In this case, the parameters are going to be the approve file and the receive file. And that is it. At this point, I have a basic reporter that will work for me. However, I mentioned in the previous episode that the approve file doesn't always exist. And it'd be nice because programs, especially diff programs, will have problems if you point to a file that doesn't exist. So I'm going to use the file utilities, ensure file exists for the approve file. All this will do is will create an empty file in the case that the file doesn't exist. And if it does exist, it will do nothing. So now it's a pretty nice reporter. If I want to make it a little more optimized, I can have it implement the singleton pattern. So to do that, I'm going to do a public static read only of kdiff. I'm going to call it instance in all caps and make a new kdiff. This allows other reporters to map to it. And if you use a use reporter with this attribute, instead of creating a new one, the reporter will actually check if this exists and use that so you don't keep on spinning up all these little classes. All right, that's everything I would need to do a good KDIF reporter, except for I might want it to be aware if KDIF is on my system or not. To do that, I'm gonna change from an approval failure to an environmental aware. That adds one more method, and now we're gonna check the file if it exists. So now, I can have an environmentally aware reporter that will say, hey, you don't have this program on here. And this is essentially what's happening in my generic diff reporter, which is what I'll show you now. If I was actually gonna extend a reporter, I wouldn't go through the trouble, even though this is only a few lines. All I would do is extend the generic diff reporter. And in my constructor, I would call the base, pass it the path, and some kind of error message. In this case, I'm just simply gonna say, please install kdiff three. And that would be all I need to do. Notice I'm still gonna keep the instance because that's gonna keep things a little nicer. So now I'm gonna end with talking about how to test this, which is a slightly complicated thing to do. Because I don't want KDIF to be launching all these times, yet I need to know that it works. So I'm going to use a pattern that I use for non-deterministic testing. And as I said, we'll cover this in a lot more detail later on. So here I have a test. I'm going to use XUnit for this one. But it doesn't matter which one you use. And the do is pretty simple. First, I need to know which directory I'm in. So I'm going to use the path utilities dot get directory for caller. This is very helpful when you want to use a resource in your same directory, but you don't want it to be part of your solution. Finally, I'm going to actually make a new KDIF reporter.
And in this KDIF reporter, I am going to get the launch arguments for the directory plus a.txt and the directory plus b.txt. I want to hold on to these arguments. This is essentially the process that I want to start. And now I have the part of verifying it. Right? And I could say just approvals.verify and pass it the args. And if I do this, you can see that it will open up and tell me the program that's going to launch. I could copy this program and bring it into my command prompt and test it manually. But what I want to do is make it so my test does that for me. And so what I'm going to do is instead of saying verify, I'm going to say verify with callback. And that allows me to create just an extra little reporter right here. So the arguments are going to come back as a string, and I'm going to call my generic diff reporter test dot start process for those arguments. So launch the process if it fails. I'm going to run this test again. And I'm going to get two reporters that occur. The kdiff reporter, hey, I can see that it works. Now that I've seen that it works, I feel much more comfortable approving the process. So there I am approving the process. And now if I run this again, it will not launch either of those two. So I saw that the process works. As long as the process doesn't change, I'm good. And if the process does change, I want to re-execute it. That is how you test the reporter. I'd like to close by highlighting Hatan, who not only wrote the Beyond Compare reporter with me when I had no idea what Beyond Compare was, but also took it on to maintain the NuGet packages. It was something I always meant to do and never got around to. Hatan stepped up, and every time I create a new release, he's the one who actually pushes it to NuGet. As always, if you have any questions, tweet them with the hash approval test. I monitor that and we'll answer you promptly.